Uh, and uh, our speaker today is Nikolai Vovchansky uh, with the talk which is devoted uh, to using of difference approximation in construction and study of uh, Harris flow. Uh, please. Thank you. Uh, can you hear me well? Uh, yes. Good. Uh, good. So this talk, as it was said by Professor Dragalt, is devoted to the fractional step method, which is the second name for this procedure. Uh, when, apply, when it is applied to Harris flows with drift. So it is somewhat of secondary nature in, in the sense that we are filling some gaps that are present and laying foundations for future work. So let uh, start with the uh, definition of the main object. So I will need the space of non-decreasing Cadillac functions on R with a square hot G1 topology. Uh, then the composition of two random elements is again a random element, which is clearly seen from this uh, derivation. Uh, I need the uh, square of a space of the whole line, though usually people discuss it on the half line, but generalization are possible and can be found in this, for instance, in this source. Uh, so the definition I will be using uh, was initially in the case of zero drift introduced by Harris in this year. I slightly modify it by introducing, uh, by considering screw space valued random elements instead of uh, other space. Harris chose, there is also a version of the definition where they consider Again, this very space by the levy proper of metric. So this is the family uh, of transformation of the real line such that they form a semigroup. They start uh, from identity. They're independent on non-intersecting time intervals. They're stationary. <clears throat> and what is the most important property, uh, the behavior of every particle which starts at time s, lives up to time t, and starts at time s from point x, can be described as stochastic differential equation with some noise, which depends on the starting point and the starting time and has some non-trivial drift. And this is a filtration uh, generated by the flow. And phi is called the infinitism, infinitesimal uh, covariance function of the flow. It in describes the interaction or the behavior, uh, the behavior of the interparticle distance. So, uh, an independently derived uh, example is given in the case where particles in the flow are independent before they meet and they just merge together without change, without any change to their diffusion. Uh, in the case of non-zero drift, it was introduced by Professor Dragovsov. And essentially, this, we see here a simplified version of the previous. Uh, Definition. I want uh, to devote a couple of slides to the uh, physical application of such models. So there are two uh, standard sources for that, well, three. In case if the flow is homeomorphic or diffeomorphic, there is the monograph of Kunita, which is purely mathematical. Then there is the monograph of Katalanis, uh, who consider it a two step averaging procedure. They considered, they con he considered uh, large particles in the medium of small one. And when aver averaging 
over small particles, uh, they, uh, the random media medium is obtained and large particles are still present as uh, a separate object and they interact in this way. Here is a broad end sheet. A similar uh, model where uh, the dependence is not only on the position of the particle, but uh, joint distribution of the positions is considered in the, this monograph. And now I want uh, to list a couple of uh, results of my attempts to find modern, or current, or recent uh, publications devoted to this very uh, model. So there is a paper, and actually a series of papers uh, by these authors, their co authors, devoted to the smoothed point vortexes in R2. So they have smooth kernel or maybe a smoothed kernel uh, that approaches some singular one, and they have common noise. Uh, in this case, in all the cases that I was able to discover, we have Lipschitz continuous coefficients or something like that. Uh, here they discover uh, the limit. Uh, Limit equation and prove the convergence in the Wasserstein distance. Uh, in this paper, which is hasn't been published, as far as I know, uh, the noise depends in depends on the number of particles, the way that it goes disappears in the limit. So in this paper, they consider it a deterministic limit as a resulting Fokker plot equation. The most uh, relatable uh, model that is that is the model that is uh, the most close to the one we consider today uh, is the stochastic Langevin equations that appear in the theory of neural stochastic fields. So there is some uh, decent uh, drift, and there is some non-trivial noise that is enjoy special correlations in a way that's very similar to the definition of Harris flows. What is y in this stochastic te term? Uh, this X, is, y. This is color at no, no, U of U depends on oh, uh, y. Sorry, 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 sorry. Y, T. Th this is X, T. X is the starting point. Thank you. Mm -hmm. X is the stated book. So this is uh, exactly the flow. Uh, there are also some uh, papers devoted to mean field games with common noise, and even papers where uh, the common noise is chosen in such a way that when you consider one particle, it behaves similar to the Fisher Wright uh, diffusion with this generator. And a very separate question is the application. Uh, may, may I ask also the, the question, uh, how do you consider it is integral? What, what W is? Here? W is uh, Wiener noise with special correlation. So where xt, yt correlated is something like cx minus t, x minus yt. So for every x, it is a Brownian motion, right? And yes, after yes. that, you can integrate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, also, these papers are sometimes written from the point of view of practitioners in the narrow field. So uh, sometimes they are written from the physical point of view. Uh, so there are some, uh, I'd say, non -ver not very rigorous moments. And when we go to the Rete flow, then effectively uh, applications are quite numerous in the sense that the Rite flow uh, often appear as limit objects. And also we had uh, an excellent talk two weeks ago by Professor Zabronsky who explicitly gave, them, gave us such examples. 
Uh, I will so we start with the construction of the Harris flow and providing assumptions that ensure that the coalescence happen. So the standard assumption that phi is symmetric and for distant u1 un is uh, strictly non-negative definite in particular it never hits zero which is needed for the corresponding matrix problem to be well defined easily this is purely cosmetic it is Lipschitz outside any neighborhood and it uh, in some neighborhood of zero it satisfies this equation so it goes to zero along for such an estimate. Uh, the drift is always bounded and it allows for such estimation from above where rho of x is also in some neighborhood of zero uh, behaves like a polynomial function. This alpha and this beta should be chosen in such a way that the coalescence happens. So if beta is greater than alpha minus one, then the coalescing Harris flow exists. If uh, this doesn't happen, the flow still exists, but it may not be a coalescing one. So if alpha is uh, small enough, uh, R may not be continuous in this model. Uh, so es es essentially the problem is that this metric degenerates with the boundary of dn, where there should be un elements. Uh, and Harris presented such an extension. Uh, however, there were some missing elements and Pinsky later provided a rigorous and extended framework in terms of generalized matching problems in domains. And I just want to formulate this result that explains how this extensions happen. So you consider the exhaustion, the sequence of domains that's ex exhaust. Uh, the first simplex, uh, do formally one point compactification, uh, introduce the corresponding topology of uniform convergence. And then you consider the, the corresponding Borel sigma algebra, uh, defines that filtration. And there is unique solution to Jerusalem Matergei problem for this operator under the assumptions that we uh, put. Solution is strong Markov and Feller, and then you just glue together uh, solutions in dn and dn minus one when this solution hits some boundary. Cool. So you talk about equation without interaction now. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We we pure we consider only Harris flows with drift. So uh, Harris called this coalescing solution C solutions when C is the space, the set of functions that match together, that such that their coordinates match together after they meet. And exactly as in the case of Harris, where there is no drift, we can obtain uh, by using this procedure of uh, Pinsky, we can build the strong mark of C solutions. And we can even slightly extend those results by saying that uh, this is measurable with respect to the Prokhorov metric by the Kuratovsky theorem, as it's done in Struk and Varadan. Uh, however, when we want To finish uh, the proof of the existence, we need also to change something, some things in the proofs of Harris. So let me quickly discuss the problem. Uh, Harris used this upper estimate. Uh, 
In the case of drift, I replace this with this estimate, which is very similar. So we have uh, epsilon in the denominator, and we have something that goes to infinity when it goes to zero. A w is just a winner process. W star is the maximum, is the running maximum of this linear process. And then we can uh, mimic the proof of the Harris and prove that this process is uniformly continuous with respect to the uniform metric on compact sets. Uh, essentially, we do this almost exactly as in Harris, in the sense that we uh, introduce such uh, devices. And by the borel cantelli lemma, it is sufficient to prove that this uh, service is convergent. Now we uh, plug in our new estimate. And since we have different M and N here, and they can be chosen small enough separately in the way that this plus this starting from some N and from fixed M is small enough, uh, we can actually use the estimate for the uh, maximum of the Wiener process and conclude that this indeed is finite. So as a result, we know that the scheme of Harris works. We have the flow. Now we want to show that this flow under the assumptions that we uh, put is a coalescing flow. Uh, so again, we mimic the approach of Harris, which says that if you have a diffusion such that uh, majorates the difference between two particles and this estimates holds, you can prove that the, pro the flow is coalescing in the following sense. Now the difference is not as diffusion. This is just a process because of this term. And this is exactly where we use uh, the assumption that this difference is majorated by this function rho. So we introduce a diffusion eta with the generator. Uh, and then by using the classical arguments from the comparison theorem, we obtain this result. The properties of this diffusion uh, is easy to, to study. So zero is accessible in finite time, it's in exit. Uh, the behavior of the plus infinity depends on the behavior of this function rho. So it behaves on our drift. For instance, it's inaccessible if drift is uh, compactly supported. And then we again proceed almost exactly as in Harris, that we uh, transform this diffusion into a Bessel process. So firstly, we put it onto a natural scale. This is a new step. And then following Harris, we switch to the Bessel, to the square of the Bessel process, but with possibly negative dimension. Uh, this is very standard uh, calculation from the theory of diffusions. So in the we end in this uh, process, which is exactly the square of the Bessel. And it is known even for the Bessel process with negative diffusion, uh, negative dim dimensions that this estimate holds. And since we can control our scale and we can, can control our uh, time change, we can go back and obtain the estimate we need. Uh, so now we constructed the Harris flow. We know for sure that it exists. I skipped all the details of the constructions. It's exactly the same as in the original paper of Harris. So now we are ready to discuss the splitting or alternatively the fractional step method or the cathodrotor formula. So the general idea is, uh, is if we have some Cauchy problem with two operators, and, uh, their sum is 
a well-defined and well-behaved operator, then uh, this iterated composition of semigroups of on time integrals on time intervals of lengths t divided by n repeated n times converge in a good sense uh, towards the solution of the limit equation. So in case an Stochastic differential equations, stochastic partial differential equations, there is a number of works devoted to this. Uh, we are especially interested in this one, where they consider Lipschitz continuous coefficients. And they essentially derived everything you want uh, using the theory of Hilbert triples. Uh, this is a related work in the sense they consider a slightly different definition of a Hilbert triple uh, this compactly and this compact embeddings. Uh, their application to some variants of Euler Maruyama schemes. And uh, it's worth noting that in the case of the variety of flows, there is no SPD representation at all, but still one can prove that the Trotter formula works and even get the estimates in the vast sustained distance. However, the speed of convergence is uh, disastrous. Uh, to obtain the estimates I want, I will consider the Harris flow that can be represented as solution to SDs. Uh, this is a known construction. I will refer to this paper of Warren and Watanabe because they all, not also discussed the construction, but also give uh, applied the Watanabe Maruyama uniqueness theorem. And that's what we need here also. So the construction goes as follows we consider the reproducing kernel Hilbert space for phi, that is a complexion of the linear span of all finite combinations with respect to this metric. And then we can construct a standard cylindrical Wiener process on this reproducing kernel Hilbert space for any phi that is continuous and any drift that is continuous and bounded also. Again, in the case of the Oratia flow, this limit does not exist. It's worth noting. noting. Uh, unfortunately, in the original paper, it is given without proof. Uh, so I had to prove it also in the case of non-trivial drift, but I think I will skip uh, the proof because it's some algebraic calculations plus some more or less elementary probability theory. It is important that it must be constructed. And we can prove that the solution, uh, that our stochastic differential equation is always represented. Uh, our Harris flow is represented as a solution to this. Well, formally it's stochastic partial, but essentially it's just stochastic differential equation. Uh, and here is a reminder that if we take any basis in this space, uh, we have three different representation as integrals uh, in the sense of Kunita as the sum of ordinary integrals and as the integral with respect to the cylindrical Wiener process where this should be understood uh, as the Hilbert speed operator from H, H phi to R uh, and all these are the same. Again, it can be proven, but I will skip the details. Well, may I ask the question to the yes. side? Uh, regarding the proposition here, you say that for every x s t, uh, you have a, a, <clears throat> a, an event of probability one for uh, for which you have that equality. Yes. Can you uh, do you have some unif uh, some uniform uh, I mean, can you put e x, s, or t inside the probability? Uh, 
Because uh, when you talk about the sense of Kunita, I would assume that this this event should not depend on X, right? Uh, yes, in the sense of Kunita, I think you can, but uh, it's more or less irrelevant for what we are going to do because we will be always dealing with a finite number of particles. Uh -huh, okay. Mm -hmm. But yes, you are right. So there is something to be discussed here. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, and for an Watanabe, uh, notice that if phi is additionally holder continuous of order this and A is Lipschitz continuous, and we always starting from this point consider only Lipschitz continuous uh, drifts, then the flow is a unique strong solution of the corresponding equation. This is exactly uh, the corollary of the Maruyama Watanabe theorem for SPDs and pairwise uniqueness. It can be proved exactly in this, exactly by using standard methods. This provides us a method of constructing couplings for such flows, because we have one uh, well-defined noise. Still, it doesn't cover all cases that we want to consider since this is, this is the example of uh, infinitesimal covariance function such that this good estimate holds, but it's not golden holder continuous with alpha that is greater or even than one. Uh, this is just to prevent uh, phi from hitting zero. So C1 and C2 are chosen in such a way that this is strictly less than this. Then we can check that this holds. Uh, so the splitting uh, in our case goes as follows. We split, we consider independently the stochastic part and, in, and the deterministic part. T and K is always K divided by N of T. This is the interval, except for the last one, because at the end, we just uh, the value at the terminal term is taken to be the corresponding left limit. So we will firstly run our uh, deterministic equation, then we use it as a starting point for our stochastic equation and construct two uh, flows. Then it can be rewritten if uh, we know that it belongs in K, so this is dNT, d star NT. And then we have this uh, equation on the whole interval. So this leaves up to T and slightly less in time this for the second interval, this outlives the second integral. Uh, in the case of homeomorphic flows, uh, we are actually almost done because again, for good SPDs, there is a paper that actually gives this nice result. For Harris flows, this translates to this uh, condition. I have to say that the original proof, as far as I can understand, has some uh, gap, which is interestingly is shared by another paper of Cotelenes and Honcharuk. It is devoted uh, to the convergence in spaces, and that convergence in such space cannot doesn't allow us to conclude this convergence happens for every t or only for almost every t uh, but using either a pairing a proper pairing or doing some work in terms of norms of the corresponding help hilbert helfand i'm sorry helfand helfand triples 
uh, you can repair the proof. So it's, it's true. Uh, there is an interesting moment here that's here. When we consider stochastic part, we can put supremum here. When we consider deterministic part, we cannot. And actually that is true. As we will see, uh, we will provide a, a proposition that uh, explains what, what happens here. Uh, so the distance between our limiting flow and the original one we will be discussing in terms of the Wasserstein distance. This is uh, just a definition of the Wasserstein distance on uh, in the space of probability measures on the real line. This fine, of course, moments of the corresponding power. And we introduce the second uh, layer of probability measures that, it, that is the distribution of this or this push forward measure. So uh, in, we are interested in this distance between the distribution of these two push forward measures. Uh, immediately from the previous theorem, uh, we get this estimate. Why? Because if you introduce these two uh, distribution functions, then this distance is exactly equals this and this again by this remark equals this expression. So integration is happens with respect to u. Oh, in general, if you return here, this estimate of course depends on the range of the set of starting points it depends linearly so if you measure uh, instead of the measure we can consider other compactly supported measures or measure with uh, controllable behavior on on infinity and derive something similar i will not discuss such generalizations uh, However, if we want, consider the deterministic part and put supremum inside, the, the best possible rate we can go is this one. Uh, it's also true if we consider non-uniform partitions. So we allow this distance to change with k. And then n minus one, we of course should be, should replace, we should replace it with the max, maximum of the distances between two points in the partition. Uh, the reason why this happens is because if uh, even you have the standard ehlers mariama scheme and very uh, simple drift, this expression behaves similarly uh, to this part because oh, this is exactly the one over n if we put this one over n inside this is exactly the difference between uh, the deterministic part and what happens on our stochastic time interval and this is greater than this, and this is, of course, has the same asymptotics as the sum without module, module, and this, this is slightly slower than bar over n. Let's prove it. So uh, we introduce such functions, which is supremo over t of the maximum of two distances uh, in R squared, between this deterministic part and stochastic part, then uh, by using uh, simple expressions, we are in the Lipschitz in the case of Lipschitz continuous coefficients. We derive almost uh, what we need for the gronol bellman lemma to happen, except that we have. Uh, uh, 
this expression. This just equals uh, this integral, where I by psi and k I denote the supremum over the interval, uh, the case interval, and then. Uh, Started taking conditional expectation on all the previous in interval except for one and moving from the right to the left, we can obtain uh, this expression because every particle in this model is just a Brownian motion. So here B is a Wiener process. The standard winner process. I introduce new parameter al alpha n and split this integral into two parts. Then let's assume that we have a uh, non uniform uh, partition. Using the standard estimate, we can uh, uh, rewrite everything in terms of this lambda and k and get the sum of lambda and k uh, du. Here is missing. It's missing one over of du somewhere. And in the end, we arrive this expression, and now alpha n should be taking lambda n one minus epsilon. Uh, when we uh, go to the case of Holder continuous coefficients, but not necessarily Lipschitz continuous, we have a piece of good news and a piece of bad news. Good news is actually for the case of zeller Mariama scheme, this has been known for a decade. And bad news is that it's been known for decades, so it's not really much we need to do. Uh, a very elegant uh, method is derived in this paper of Gönge and Rassoni. And if A is Lipschitz and sigma is Holder continuous of this order, then the Ehlen Mariama scheme for this stochastic differential equations is convergent with the speed. So it's logarithm for just one half and slightly quicker. Uh, their idea is to modify the classical method by introducing uh, these functions. But now, instead of one parameter, as is the classical comparison theorem, uh, we have two parameters that control delta is greater than one that control what happens if we consider psi n of sigma squared oh, squared ds. Now, this can be split in two parts and the same happens in our uh, case because we can rewrite our uh, two differences as the ETO process plus two corrections. This correction is small because A is bounded and this is small. This is small in the in L2 sense and zeta n is the inter process, so we can apply the inter formula for it. Uh, of course, we also need some preparations in the sense that we need to rewrite this uh, integral here as an integral with respect to one winner process for all this to work but in the end we obtain exactly the same with by using the very same calculation with some minor corrections 
Uh, however, if we assume no uh, holder continue, if we do not impose any assumptions uh, about the holder continuity of our infinitesimal covariance, still we can show that finite dimensional motions are convergent weakly in the square hole space uh, to the motion of the resulting uh, Harris flow. Here should stand phi a, phi a. I will give only a sketch of the proof because it's very similar to what happens in the case of the Arita flow. Some changes should be made, but generally speaking, follow the same uh, idea. This sequence is tight by the Tikhonov theorem. Any weak limit is continuous, uh, so the convergence happens in the uniform metric. This also can be checked. Uh, any weak limit is a solution to the corresponding martingale problem, and any weak limit is a coalescing limit. And as we already noted, the weak limit, uh, the C solution is unique. Uh, again, some minor changes should be made. For instance, uh, instead uh, of simpler expression in the case of the uh, uh, reactive flow, we have something uh, slightly longer in the sense that in the uh, case of the reactive flow, there is no this term, but we can prove this estimate and then using some uh, lengthy calculation. So I don't want to repeat it here because uh, it has been already discussed many years ago on the seminar. You can conclude that the weak limit uh, is a C solution. That now, uh, what should be done next is here? So as of now, I see the following goals. First of all, we know that we can estimate the distance between particles in terms of this Bessel process. These negative dimensions that uh, put some restriction of the number of results that are available, but still we know that uh, we are interested in the Bessel process with absorbing uh, in zero at zero, so we can we have the Gersanov theorem for Bessel processes, so we can calculate some things here. Uh, now, the starting point of all this discussion was my idea to work with densities of the push forward measures. Because it was, and for this, actually, uh, you can switch from the reproducing kernel Hil Hilbert space to the so-called native reproducing kernel Hilbert space, which is a subset of the Sobel of space, because this control, the Sobel of norm, gives us control of, over the Sobel of norm. And Sobel of norm allows us to consider expressions of this type, because the Sobel of norm controls the uniform norm. Uh, also, and I actually expected this to happen uh, at this moment, but I still need some work to do. The analogous that lie to Barrow expansion for the Euler Maruyama scheme, which gives us uh, an explicit formula for this function phi in terms of the coefficients of the uh, initial stochastic differential equation. And again, uh, since as we have seen uh, most papers now deal with either the smooth case, the case of the euphemorphic flows, or the case of the Arita flow, it would be nice to derive some estimates of how the Arita flow acts on function functions. And that's actually all I wanted to tell today. Well, okay, uh, thank you very much.
Uh, maybe somebody have questions or comments, please. May I ask a question? Yes, of course. Uh, sure. it, it is about page, uh, page 41. Uh, 41. It is this kind of result. And I remember, and you also mentioned that today that you have a similar result for the Aratia flow where you, you talk about convergence only finite number of particles. Yes. Uh, but don't you expect that you would have this, uh, I mean, uh, th that type of, I mean, the convergence, for instance, in the, uh, in the score hot space with respect to uh, the variable X, for instance, when you have the case uh, that particles coalesce. Because as, as I understand, uh, it, to be able to get the conclusion about convergence in the score hot space, everything what you now need to do that prove only the tightness in the, in, in the score hot space. And for the tightness in score hot space, you can uh, you uh, tightness in score hot space you can get uh, uh, just controlling the process at yes. three at three different points. Yes. And it seems that if you would uh, if you have coalescence and so on, you would be able to control. I mean the process in, at three different points in order to get the uh, the tightness in the score hot space with respect to special variable. Did, uh, didn't you try to do that? I mean uh. this idea. Maybe I'm missing the point because this is exactly for the Harris flow. Mm -hmm. And it's also true for the Arati flow. Mm -hmm. And oh, maybe I have missed what flows are you talking about that I should uh, try. I'm talking now about the convergence, but in the score hot space in, in the D of R, these values in the space of, of, of say, of trajectories. So here you just fix x1, x2, x3, and oh. so on. But I'm talking about when you just consider the, the, the whole flow simultaneously and talk about convergence in the score hot space. Yeah, I, I, I see. Uh, this is exactly also something I uh, expect to get my hands on. Yeah. So uh, like uh, also the solutions in this space and so on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, some other questions. Uh, also, as far as I remember, in case of uh, a radio flow, it uh, can be considered uh, backward or dual flow simultaneously. And uh, you, you get some estimations for it also. What happened here? Uh, well, I think uh, uh, I didn't do that for the Arati flow, and we didn't do that for the Arati flow, for the dual of the Arati flow simultaneously. But I remember it was something like uh, you can see the simultaneous convergence of uh, flows. Flows and backwards, uh, dual flows. I yes, exactly, exactly. That was the paper that uh, where I considered the convergence of flows. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. the co covariances are convergent, then flows and dual flows simultaneously converge as measures. Mm -hmm. So this is exactly what Vitaly Konarovsky talked about convergence in the score hot space or there was considered as radon measures. Uh, so I think I think this should also work. The only problem is that if you go for a very rigorous treatment of dual flows in the case of coalescing flows, uh, you, you need to write everything. As usual. As usual, uh, yes. OK. Uh, maybe other questions, please? Thank you. If no, thank you again uh, for interesting thank talk. Uh, and uh, as uh, far as uh, uh, Georgi uh, informed me and other participants before the seminar, uh, next uh, seminar uh, will be canceled due to uh, 
the speaker uh, due to the circumstances the speaker uh, is not able to uh, do the uh, presentation so uh, next week we, we are free and uh, we'll uh, see each other uh, after two weeks bye bye everybody bye bye bye, -bye.